Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today is May 29, 2023 and we're getting into the volume 102 of me answering your immigration related questions. As you can see, I have all your comments pulled up in front of me. As always, before starting this video, I'm going to mention, as I mentioned in every video, I'm not an immigration attorney. This is not a legal advice. All the information provided in these videos on this channel are directly from official government sources like USAS whenever it comes to applications and uh, immigration petitions and of course visa bulletin whenever it comes to uh, family and employment based um, immigration and family reunification cases. So let's start with the very first common question from King Germain. Hello sir, you have any predictions for the new fiscal year for the visa bulletin? Because the visa bulletin stuck for quick a while now, many people waiting lose all hope. Your channel is my therapy, thank you very much. King, thank you very much for kind words and, and I really appreciate appreciate your comment and it's a really good question. So, the best way to make any kind of judgment, any kind of predictions, uh, any kind of estimates about the visa bulletin is to uh, look at the past several months and see what is happening. And in the past few months, we had some very, very serious inconsistency. Y you know, for a very long time after the uh, after we had the whole situation with the pandemic, we had the closures, uh, the visa bulletin was not moving at all. For all the categories, there was absolutely no movement. Finally, as of recently, we started seeing some movement. And in the past three months, there were a few interesting things that happened. There was one month where it was just F2A category that moved and we were really happy about that because if you see one category moving it means all right at least you know something is happening it, it is being processed stuff is you know moving along the backlog is moving along and then the next month and i'm pretty sure it was uh, may it was either may or april uh visa bulletin we have seen an awesome movement it was really really good some of the categories moved as much as six months and that was really nice and to me that sign was okay finally things are moving along all the stuff that we had all the backlog the artificial backlog from the pandemic that accumulated during the closures not the backlog that we had because of the lack of the availability of the immigrant visas but the backlog from cases not being processed at all immigrant visas not being issued at all we saw them move and it was great to see it because well finally things started moving along However, unfortunately, this uh, kind of a movement trend, it stopped as of June 2023. So if you check June 2023 visa bulletin and May 2023 visa bulletin, it's exactly the same. It's copy paste. There is absolutely no change. So what does that tell, you know, me, for example, you know, someone who always looks at these visa bulletins and you know, a lot of you guys are staying on top of this because you have um, you know, family petitions and you're waiting for it and you're checking on it. Unfortunately, it's not really a good sign because we were, you know, expecting to have that good movement and then kind of normalize and see at least one month at a time. So, for example, if in June 2023, let's say F1, for example, the uh, uh, unmarried sons and daughters of U.S. citizens, right, category. If we are seeing in June 2023, the priority date that that are receiving immigrant visas are being issued the immigrant visas or, or they're becoming available or they're becoming current on their priority date, however you call it, it's really the same thing. It's December 2014. In July 2023, we, it's normal to expect this to be January 2015. So one month passes one month movement on each of the categories right at least unfortunately that wasn't the case between may and june so it's really hard to tell as of right now what is happening <clears throat> are we catching up are we slowing down the the way the system is set up it will only keep on slowing down unfortunately unless something major unless there's a major change that, 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 is going, that is going to happen because the way the reason why we have the backlog in the first place is because there's more applications, more petitions, than there is available immigrant visas. And each year, there is more and more of this backlogged 
petitions, basically waiting for their availability of the immigrant visas. So, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not really a, a very nice picture. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, I started this channel. I started talking more about family uh, preference categories um, and, you know, always stay on top of your cases and reach out, reach out to your local elected officials and tell them that this is not fair. This is not right. It's, this is not how the system is supposed to be because legal immigrants who are who went through the process themselves and who are petitioning legally for their family members and their family members, you know, paying all the fees, medical examinations, interviews, background checks. They're coming here legally, um, able to legally work, not no responsibility for American taxpayer because you sponsor them, not the government. You sponsor this, you know, when you petition for someone, you are a sponsor. There is no reason. There is really no reason. There is no benefit to nobody, especially not to immigrants who whose families are separated so yes yes if you can reach out to your local elected officials whether they are you know senators congressmen whoever let them know that change needs to happen and and, and this is not right this is this is not fair um, so i really hope i was able to answer at least some of your concerns king and i i can relate i Myself, I'm an immigrant. I myself have a petition, so we can all hope that things will speed up sometime soon. All right, let's move on to the next one from Alkaline Brown. Hi, sir. Can my dad petition for me, unmarried daughter, and my two children who turned 21? Which category it will fall on? My dad is... Uh, okay, so he's a citizen. Great. So, yes, yes, Alkaline, absolutely, your dad can definitely petition for you. The not so good news is that your two children, because they are over 21, because they are, you know, already turned 21, they will not um, be as, they will not uh, fall under the category of uh, derivative beneficiaries, okay? So the best thing to do is to file for your dad, to file for you, um, unmarried daughter, over 21, and uh, the category for that is going to be... The very first one, actually, we were just giving the example, F1, unmarried sons and daughters of U.S. citizens. So you are going to be in F1 category. And right now, in F1 category, people are waiting for their immigrant visas approximately, approximately for, let's see, six years plus three, about nine years, roughly. About nine years, a little bit less than nine years. Uh, so yes, the sooner your dad files this petition, the better it is. Um, now, whenever it comes to your children who are over 21, the best thing to do is once you get your documents to immediately petition for them. Once you get your permanent residence card based on the petition that was filed by your dad, immediately file for them and then they are going to be in the F2B category if they are still unmarried by the time but it's most likely they're going to be married so it might be a little bit of a different situation you might need to wait for citizenship unfortunately and for everyone who's watching this video you see how much obstacles you see how much obstacles there is you know a, a father who is a u.s citizen filing for their daughter they they have to wait nine years to reunify and that's not even the end of the process because the kids of the daughter, they will have to wait the same nine years once she gets the citizenship after, you know, walking around with one year of green card and five years of, of U.S. citizen citizenship, uh, till the U.S. citizenship, right? You get the green card and then five years you wait and then you apply for citizenship. Um, green card, it's not going to take one year because once you get, you, 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 you can file you, another petition as soon as you enter the country because it converts to the, uh, from the, temporary permanent resident card the i551 stamp it converts to the uh, permanent resident card as soon as you enter the country uh, but you see how crazy this process is and how much time it takes so again again same thing uh, in response to king Re reach out to your local elected officials tell them this this is ridiculous alkaline one recommendation that i would give you is so that you don't have to wait that long is because your father is a citizen see if he can send you a regular invitation for a regular tourist visitor visa 
so that at least you can come here and visit him and and bring you know your your kids together with you all all, all together uh just to visit him so that meanwhile there is while this process is going you at least have the opportunity to spend time with your father because waiting is it's gonna it's gonna take it's gonna take time it's gonna take a long time unfortunately all right let's move on to the next one from paul adorm I have been documentary qualified since November 2022. My dad filed for me and he is a US citizen. I have still not gotten my interview date. Please, what do I do? Paul, so you're already documentarily qualified, Paul. Congratulations to that. That's a huge step. Uh, one thing I would ask you, if you can, please submit a separate comment uh, and let me know your category because, you know, if, if, if uh, you, your, your dad is a US citizen, uh, you might be in F1 category and you also might be in F3 category unmarried and married so it depends if you're married or unmarried if you're unmarried like i was answering to alkaline um for f1 category for all chargeability area there's also china india mexico philippines separate chargeability areas but for all chargeability areas the wait time right now is roughly nine years okay so depending on when your priority date is that's how we can make the uh, estimation for when your immigrant visa will be available. But if you are married, obviously you're going to be in F3 category and that's much longer. There is now 15 years wait. So it, you see it's a huge difference. So if you can let me know your category, your priority date, I might be able to give you a little bit more details. Now, one thing that I want to mention usually whenever it comes to becoming documentarily qualified, after you are documentarily qualified, typically, Typically, they allow you to be documentarily qualified within a year, year and a half, sometimes two years before the availability of your immigrant visa. So again, depending on the category, because you're waiting since November 2022, that's roughly what, six months? You're probably looking at, at possibly at another six months to a year uh, before your interview is scheduled. But again, if you can come back and let me know your priority date, and your category, also the chargeability area would be nice. Uh, I, I, I will give you, I will be able to give you a little bit better, still rough estimates, but a little bit better estimates. All right, let's move on to the next one from Corazon Gray. My daughter family F3 priority day, June 2003. Wow, man of the processing year and month, they have a chance to come this year. Wow, 2003. So I'm thinking Corazon, you are in Mexico chargeability area because this is very, very long, long time. You're already waiting for 20 years. And the, the crazy times like this are for Mexico, which is another crazy thing, right? When people are doing everything legally, like Corazon, they're waiting for 20 years to see their daughter. Meanwhile, there's a group of people that jump over the border and they are being glorified on the news right here in, in this country it's, it's ridiculous it's unfortunately it's ridiculous it's completely unfair but let's take a look uh f3 priority so yes definitely not december 2008 because you know five years already passed so definitely not all chargeability area i'm thinking mexico so mexico or philippines so it can't be either mexico or it can be philippines because philippines is showing june 2002 mexico is showing november 97 so, Corazon, if you are in the Mexico chargeability area, then you are looking at another, roughly, another 2003 and 1997, another six years of wait. Think about it, how ridiculous is this? Wow. Wow. For, uh, for married sons and daughters of U.S. citizens, if you are in the Mexico chargeability areas, that is 26 years as of right now, backlog. Even when you're doing it legally, why would anybody would do want to do it legally if they can just jump over the border and the, be in the country and the, and that's it? Why? Of course, because this is the way the system is set up. So so ridiculous. But Corazon, if you are in the Philippines chargeability area, then you are very very close because it's June 02. So you are just a year before your priority date becomes current if you're in the Philippines um, chargeability area. Which means that you're looking roughly at another year, year and a half, because once your visa, immigrant visa becomes current, usually you're scheduled the interview within like few months, can be like up to six months, depending on how busy the US Embassy is. So it's really close. Uh, you might not get it this year, 
but I'm thinking by the end of next year you definitely will have um, your 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 interview. Uh, your daughter will have uh, the interview. So once you do, please come back to this channel and, and, and let us know when you're scheduled because it's it's really nice to see people getting their resolution. It's really nice. All right, let's move on to the next one from Wally HDH. I-130 was filed in 25th December 2008 by U.S. citizen and F3 family category, which was documentarily qualified in January 2021, and since then waiting for interview to be scheduled. It's a reunification petition. How long more should we wait? All right, so let's take a look. It's again F3 December 2008, so it's already documentarily qualified, so we're looking at the graph A. Let's see, 2008 F3. Okay, wow, and it's December 2008. So if you're in all chargeability area, and I'm thinking you are, Wally, you're literally somewhere around the corner, December 25th, and right now it is on 8th of December. So literally, you're, you're not even months away, you're days away, judging by the, the, by the visa bulletin. So you should be getting, you should definitely, your, your, uh, your immigrant visa will be becoming current, your priority date, that is, be, should be becoming current, literally any time now, and... I would say within few months you will be you will have your interview scheduled so again if you can come back please let us know that your interview was scheduled because it's it's really nice again to to hear to hear the resolution all right zach i will see it later okay zach i hope uh, you watched it and it was helpful moving further we got a question from santiago cinerine Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Santiago, by the way, thank you very much for being publicly subscribed to this channel. That's what this icon means. I really appreciate it. So Santiago says, hi, really grateful for these educational videos. You're very welcome. I have a question. Does this apply for renewal? This would be my third work permit renewal and it is the first time doing it by myself. Mine expired a couple of days ago together with my temporary license. I can't get a new license without it. Yes. Okay, so yes, I-765 application that I'm talking about there is definitely for the renewal as well. Um, it is available online and I'm going to double check. We're going to go to forms, all forms, 765. I'm, I'm going to double check if it's still, yes, it is still available online. So when you're filling it out online, you will actually have an option like you have in the actual application. I'll show you in the application where it says the very first part, reason for applying. There is initial permission to accept employment. There's a replacement of lost stolen and the very last option is renewal of my permission to accept employment. So this is what you will be selecting. Uh, obviously, I would recommend filling it out online. It makes it much easier, much faster. Um, you, you will avoid a lot of potential mistakes that you can make on a paper application. Once you pay it, it is already submitted. It's already delivered to USAS for a review. So definitely do it online. But yes, in the online application, you will see an option where it says, whether it's initial application or if it is renewal, you will be selecting renewal. Alrighty, let me put this and we're gonna move to the next question from Dennis to Ford. Dennis, thank you for another question. And this icon indicates that he's one of the top commenters. I really appreciate it, Dennis. Thank you for watching all the videos and asking all your questions. Pandemic is over. World Health Organization announced when is immigration going to lift the restrictions on visa issuance <coughs> and in the case of backlog. Okay, so the only positive change that we had that came from all the CDC, World Health, uh, Homeland Security, bunch of, you know, whatever, um, is that they finally took off the um, restrictions on the entry for non-citizens and non-residents, right? International travelers, travelers, whenever it comes to showing the proof of vaccination. So that's no longer the case, which is great. Unfortunately, it is still the case for people who are uh, applying for you know any kind of immigration status which is ridiculous so as part of the medical examination they still require getting that shot which is again ridiculous because it's not required for international travelers but it is still required for immigrants it's dumb uh, so once again I'm gonna ask everyone who's watching these videos please reach out to the local elected officials and tell them that this is ridiculous and they need to get rid of it okay because it's not a requirement but as for the visa issues <clears throat> it's moving along we've seen some movement on the visa bulletins as for the backlog we've seen some movement you know the backlog going down not as good as we expected as i personally expected but 
you know, the best thing to do is judge three months at a time, like I was explaining earlier. So we will see. We will see what's going to happen in July 2023 with the Bulletin. I'm really waiting for that one. Um, everybody knows, you know, if you don't know, I know Dennis, Dennis knows, but if you, whoever's watching and you don't know, every month the new Visa Bulletin comes out. I make a separate video specifically on the Visa Bulletin where I compare it to the previous, previous months. And uh, <clears throat> it kind of helps us to see where the movement is going. Is it positive? Is it not so positive? All right, let's move on to the next one from <coughs> Sella Elmo. Hi, I have a case number and invoice number 2022, June 6. My case F4 accepted but still not calling NVC to my interview. Okay, Sela. So you're in enforced priority category and you got your case number and invoice number, <coughs> which means that your case was already approved by USAS and was already transferred to NVC because it's in the NVC that gives you the case number and the invoice number. Now, I'm assuming that this happened on June 6, 2022. What I would really like to know is what the priority date is, when your application was filed with USCIS, because when I have it, I will be able to look at the visa bulletin and give you rough estimates of how long you will be waiting. As of right now, for all chargeability areas, for F4 category, for force preference category, there is backlog of roughly 16 years. So roughly 16 years people are waiting. So let's say, for example, if your priority date is in 2014, in 2030, your priority date will become current and your immigrant visa roughly should be available around 2030, unless there is more of a backlog that accumulates in the meantime, which it will. That's why the estimates are rough, but at least it's, you know, it's, it's better than not having any estimates at all. So if you can, please come back to this channel, submit a separate comment with the chargeability area, the priority date. Um, if you were already documentarily qualified or not, will be helpful as well. Uh, and also put the, once again, the uh, category, because I, you know, I might not remember just in case so that, you know, I get, I have it in the comment and I don't forget. Alrighty, let's move on to the next question from Susie and George, George's, Jordak. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Hi, do you know? Do you think USAS will drop this unfair mandate? Okay, so it's about the US. Yeah, it's a COVID-19 vaccine requirement. My husband is an American citizen. Our kids are American citizens as well. I've been waiting for so long for this mandate to be dropped so I can apply for my green card. I know there's a lot of people in the same situation. What do you recommend us to do? where to go for advice. Thank you so much for your information. Uh, so Susie and George, thank you very much for, 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 for this question. It's, it's, I mean, it, it's crazy unfair. You know, I, I have, I have a couple of petitions going. Uh, some of them will be um, pretty soon. And I really don't want to, you know, of course, you know, they, my, my you know, relatives that I'm waiting, for, they're not going to go for the medical examination until it is dropped specifically for this particular reason, because no, we don't want to do that. Our health is more important than this bureaucracy and these documents. So yes, I would definitely recommend waiting it out because it was dropped recently for international travelers. I'm thinking Homeland Security will get to this and drop it for families as well, for you know family reunification petitions. Um, and in general, whoever is applying for green card because they were already here for for this long and applying for green card there's absolutely no point oh, to go now and get all of these i mean most of all of these vaccinations honestly should be um voluntary i guess that's the word none of this should be mandatory just really any of these vaccinations that are on the list it's it's wrong to make them mandatory it, it, it is it should be a person's choice whether they want to do it, whether they don't want to do it. And, you know, if the person is sick or, or something is wrong with that person, I highly doubt it. They could just walk around and, you know, be able to work and, and sustain themselves in the United States of America and go through this immigration process, paying all these crazy fees to these immigration attorneys and then applying for a green card that is like over I, I think close to thousand dollars for the application and then go for a medical examination that is like five hundred dollars have all this money <clears throat> meanwhile being like deadly sick and like con being contagious to everyone around them it's just it, it's, it's dumb 
things like this don't don't happen all right so unfortunately this is just another kind of a unfair um things that are implemented for those who for families most of the times most of the times it is for families uh so i i, I myself hope that this is going to be dropped i would recommend again <clears throat> whichever state you live in reach out to your state senator reach out to your congressman that were you know that are from you know from, from your di district and let them know let them know this needs to be dropped that this is ridiculous that this is unfair that it was already dropped for international travels and there's no point to keep it for the families uh, and i just keep hoping that somebody will for once make the right decision in there you know okay let's move on to the next one from philip thomas hi this is philip my son who is u.s citizen want to file for green card for his parents and his sister who is indian citizen now the question is whether he can include his sister with his parents since she she a disabled child age 15. thank you very much for your sincere support and help that you're providing to many philip thank you very much for your kind words and thank you very much for your question this is an excellent question yes definitely absolutely so your son will be filing for us because he's a u.s citizen he will be petitioning for his parents the great news is that it because the category um this particular category when u.s citizen filing for their parents petitioning for their parents it's an immediate relative category so it's it's processed very quickly there is no backlog you don't you're not dealing with a visa bulletin whatsoever all right so that's great now because the sister is under 21 years old she will be going as a derivative uh, of the beneficiaries and the, the beneficiaries in this case are you know the parents so yes she will be able to come here to the united states with you know with the family obviously there is a whole separate category f4 where u.s citizen is petitioning as a sibling you're not going to be doing any of that you don't want to do that because whenever it comes to siblings uh it's they they're they are unfortunately falling under the backlog under the visa bulletin from the department of state so they will be waiting quite a long time so she will be uh she needs to be included in the application as a derivative uh beneficiary and i would recommend starting this application as soon as possible like i said you know it's processed quickly because it is immediate relative category but nevertheless you know there is still there's still time involved um in um uh, you know to process to get this application process because you're sending the the i-130 to usas you're waiting for them to review this petition and i would recommend filing it online because it makes it much faster uh, like i was mentioning earlier uh, once it is reviewed once it is approved it is then transferred to the nvc and then during the nvc do, during you know becoming documentarily qualified you have to submit all the documents wait for them to review it once you are documentarily qualified it is then transferred to the u.s embassy and then you have to wait for u.s embassy to schedule the appointment then they give you once they schedule the appointment they give you 30 days in advance before the appointment so that you can go and do the medical examination so there's a lot of steps involved in in this throughout this process in the meantime so the sooner it is started the better yeah, even though there is no backlog there's still some uh, time that is involved uh to to wait so the sooner you start it the better all right let's move on to the very last i guess coming for today is uh archie lee says yeah and amen amen okay i think we got time for one more question let's move on down here to Ke keita smith thank you for answering my question i have called the u.s embassy in lagos that is where his interview will be held i have called them no answer wow and I have also done an inquiry and they say the same thing. The case is documentarily qualified and they have no idea when an interview will be scheduled. Wow. It's really straining our marriage. I just came back from Nigeria because it's been two years since I seen my husband. I do hope it is around the corner. And again, thank you for your time. Kita, I'm sorry you have to deal with this. This is ridiculous. I, I, I can't believe they just told you that they don't know when the interview is going to be scheduled so one thing that i would recommend is actually reaching out to the u.s embassy through the email email them and put all your inquiry in the email and if you do not hear from them within about a week i would recommend because you're already here you're in the united states of america i would recommend reaching out to your local elected officials senator um a lot of a lot of i i personally done it I personally done it. I mean, you know, 
it's uh <laughs> when you're dealing with the immigration process you're going to be dealing with problems regardless there I, I have not seen anyone who've been through an immigration process just smoothly without any problems everything goes smooth everything is great you always deal with something and i had some serious problems and i actually had someone one of the elected officials who was uh currently a senator of the state state senator their office actually helped me and the problem was resolved with their help they reached out to usas on my behalf and the problem was resolved so it definitely works when i say it i don't just say it oh reach out to somebody reach out to somebody no it definitely works uh, and you already done everything you need on your end to resolve the problem yourself you reached out to the NVC. Now you have the letter that they responded that they cannot do nothing. That they don't, they don't know when it's going to be scheduled, which is bad. You reached out to the U.S. Embassy and they're not answering the phone. One more thing. Try one more thing. Send them the email, and within a week, if you don't get a response, be prepared. Find your state senator or it can be anybody, congressman, whoever. You can do the research on them. You can find all the elected officials for your state, for your district and then go to their websites and you will see on their website there will be public relationships or something like that and the areas that they help people with and most of them they do have immigration and they have this most of them they have this contact forms where you contact them and it is in their interest that they they will reach out some of them won't but a lot of them will and they will ask for more details and then you can provide you know the letter from NVC you can provide the letter that you sent to um, the US Embassy and how there was no response you can explain the situation and on your behalf they they will reach out to the US Embassy I know for a fact they will reach out if they are willing to help you they will reach out to the US Embassy and they might get you know they might they might help you with this situation and please again Kita, I appreciate your update on this. If you can come back and provide the further update on what's happening, I would really appreciate it because, you know, people are watching these. So maybe some of my answers are helpful um, to some of the questions, but I know for a fact that seeing people resolve their cases this way is really, really, really refreshing because we all know that by ourselves, we are just, you know, compared to this government machine that is ridiculously corrupt and, and unfair to a lot of things like, you know, like you can see yourself, people waiting for their daughter, US citizen waiting for to see their daughter for 23 years in Mexico. This, what is this? This is, this is some, from 1997. If I was the Department of State, I'd be embarrassed to put these dates in there, you know? But they put it like it is, like it is normal. Meanwhile, we have this border crisis that we have here. So when you see people find ways to resolve their cases, even in spite of all this unfairness, it's really refreshing. So I would really appreciate the update, Kita. Alrighty, thank you very much everyone for uh, tuning in today. Hope my answers were helpful. If you have any follow-up questions, you're very welcome to drop them in the comments below. Just make sure don't respond to my comment within your comment please submit a separate comment because if you respond to my comment within your comment, I don't get notifications from YouTube for that. So thank you very much for watching. Appreciate your time. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.